The Flint water crisis is an example of what happens when the needs of profit and industry are deep more important than the needs of the people. Flint residents lost their local democratic rights and their local elected officials had their powers usurped due to the imposition of Michigan's emergency manager law. Supposed debt in majority black and brown populated school districts and municipalities, in addition to assets that could be privatized with a driving motivator for the communities who would lose their democracy. Since the passage of the emergency manager law in March 2011, no majority white community within the state of Michigan has been taken over by the state and lost their democracy. My foray into the fight for clean water was embedded in the larger fight for the restoration of democracy in Flint. At the time of the switch, I was a member of the Flint Democracy Defense League, a grassroots group of Flint residents, some of whom who are seated in the audience. I see y'all five years too long, who came together after Flint went into state receivership. Immediately after the switch to the Flint River, the water coming out of my tap was brown, yellow, and or smelled like an open sewer. Within a month, I was boiling my water and had a point of use Brita filter in the kitchen. Unfortunately, I was still bathing in unfiltered water. I was getting rashes and I had what I believed to be cystic acne. We had boil water advisories. Our water bills ballooned to the highest in Genesee County. Little did we know at the time we were paying one of the highest water and sewer bills in the country for poison water. Because our group understood the emergency manager law, we knew we had to force the state to switch us back to clean to a clean source of water. The fact that your government was the primary party responsible for the poisoning of the community was nearly unheard of. And it took a very long, hard, old-fashioned organizing fight to even get the state to acknowledge that we had toxic water. I have worked as a community organizer and racial justice facilitator for over 15 years. One lesson I took from the work is the expertise is in the room. Unfortunately, residents were not in the room when solutions to the Flint water crisis were crafted. We never wanted to live our lives using bottled water. Bottled water sends a message that water should be commodified. How can there be a price tag for something essential to human life? In addition, the plastic is sourced from petrochemicals, which in turn resources the fossil fuel industry. These refineries are located primarily in communities of color. We wanted Medicare for all, but we received non-income test Medicaid, leaving people over the age of 21 and non-pregnant adults without health care. We wanted water mains, internal plumbing, and service lines replaced, but we only received service line replacement through a settlement agreement. We wanted people to be held accountable for the cover-up, but in June of this year, the Michigan Attorney General's office dropped the charges for the 15 state and local employees responsible for the Flint water crisis. The state employees who did not previously reside referred it back to work in July. If there hasn't been a long-term plan developed to fix Flint, how can you fix any other community? It is a false argument that compliance equals safety. 12 parts per billion, 15 parts per billion, those numbers are all made up. The American Medical Association says there is no safe level for lead. So why don't we have health-based standards at the EPA? Flint was denied a federal disaster declaration because of the Stafford Act. The Flint water crisis didn't occur because of a tornado, hurricane, or earthquake. It was caused by, caused by environmental racism, white supremacy, patriarchal decision making, capitalism, and the belief that needs of a large corporation like General Motors are more important than the needs of poor black and brown people who can't afford to pay to the the staff are at least to be amended to include the poison of communities through air and water. We have a registry, but we didn't have a compensation fund to meet our long-term health care needs. Flint residents not 
never stop paying a premium price for poison water, and water systems can charge as much as they want through fees without any transparency or accountability. High water bills in Flint has called families to live without water. We need a federal income-based water affordability plan so water is affordable for all, with shutoff protections for seniors, families, and children, and individuals who need water for their medical needs. Finally, we need a massive infrastructure investment to remove these lead pipes once and for all. Yeah. It's been over five years since the switch to the Flint River. 1,970 days to be exact. My, fam my life has changed in ways I couldn't even imagine. My health has gotten worse. One of my seizures has partially paralyzed my vocal cords and has changed my voice. I can no longer raise my voice. Even though they are mostly under control now through the help of medication, I know that if I did not have a job that offered an affordable comprehensive medical plan, I would have to make decisions between bills and my medication. Fortunately, I also have the opportunity to travel and tell my organizing story in this long haul fight for reparations and justice. Thank you.